ICH quality guideline series provides the guidelines for pharmaceutical quality. This quality is for drug substances and drug products. All these quality guidelines are essential and required to be followed for the pharmaceuticals including the development of drug substance and the products. This video is for ICH Q8 guideline which is for pharmaceutical development and in summary this guideline provides the basis for QBD principles to be applied in the pharmaceutical product development. Quality by design is the main area for this guideline and let's start with the introduction. ICH Q8 guideline is for development purpose. That means how the quality is built into the pharmaceutical formulation or pharmaceutical product. This guideline is issued by International Council for Harmonization ICH. It is a eight number of guidelines and it deals with the pharmaceutical development. ICHQ8 focus on the systematic science based approach for pharmaceutical development and it utilizes and provides the QBD principles. ICHQ8 guideline encourages quality by design to enhance product quality and process understanding. This guideline ensures that the pharmaceutical products are with the required quality, safety, efficacy and are consistent in the performance. This guideline is required to be understood by all the pharma professionals whether they are in academics, whether they are in research or in industry in the other departments. This is the core guideline for the quality by design for the pharmaceutical product development. Objective of this product development is to design a product which has the quality and it is manufactured with a robust manufacturing process. Ensuring intended performance, safety and efficacy. Pharmaceutical development enhance process understanding so that the process to be designed is robust and it reduced the variability. Objective of pharmaceutical development is to facilitate regulatory flexibility and continuous improvement. So, formulating a product with robust composition, robust manufacturing process and is flexible for the continuous improvement as well. That means in total this guideline provides you understanding for the life cycle of the pharmaceutical product. Key elements of this guideline are there like QTPP, CQAs, CPPs, CMAs, control strategy and the life cycle approach. These are the elements of quality by design principle. QTPP is a quality target product profile which defines desired quality attributes of the final products. That means what should be your target while you are starting the development of the pharmaceutical product. Key elements of QTPP are doses form, route of administration, strength and potency, purity, stability, bioavailability and performance characteristics and all the other characteristics which are related to the pharmaceutical equivalence and the therapeutic equivalence. Doses form of the pharmaceutical product may be tablet, capsule, injection, cream or other formulations. Route of administration may be by oral IV, topical, 
or other root what is the strength and potency the impurity and stability stability of the product should be sufficient and stability should be such that it is safe to use while it is on the shelf life period or it is in the market and this stability period should be justified and as per that shelf life period should be designed bioavailability and performance characteristics should be such that the product will be safe and effective for the use by the patient critical quality attributes so to meet the qtpp there are certain quality attributes which are critical for the safety and efficacy and these cqas form the basis for qtpp cqas are uh, attributes which may be physical chemical biological and microbiological properties that impact product quality and these cqas are required to be within certain ranges or within specified limits for example assay is a cqa and it should be within 95% to 105% of the label claim or it should be within 90 to 110% similarly the other cqas like dissolution rate drug release rate assay potency impurity profile or degradation uh, or related substances particle size polymorphic form and many others so these cqas may be physical chemical biological or microbiological properties that impact the quality then a risk assessment in the qbd so qbd works on the principle of risk assessment risk identification and risk mitigation and controlling such parameters which are having certain risk on to the cqas and on to the qtp risk identification for the cqas and cqas as impact the qtpp the risk assessment is done with identification for the critical material attributes those are cmas and cpps these are the critical process parameters so identification of cm and cpp is the principle of qbd to understand the risk on to the cqas it helps in predicting potential risk and mitigating them proactively common tools used for the risk assessment are ishikawa or fishbone diagrams failure mode effect analysis that is fmea and design of experiments that is doe so doe is a tool for the qbd and ishikawa diagram or fishbone diagram and fmea are the tools used to understand the risk then design space design space is a multi dimensional range of input variables ensuring product quality design space establishes a safe operating range for cmas and cppps changes within the design space do not require regulatory approval regulatory flexibility allows for efficient scale up and technology transfer now listen carefully to this uh, uh, slide and the design space information once you identify the cmas and cpps then you need to study the impact of those cmas and cpps on to the cqas for example if you are working on to a formulation which contains bcs class 2 or 4 uh, type of api these two category of bcs class have uh, particle size as a critical material attributes so api particle size will be very important and will be a risk for the dissolution dissolution will be a risk for safety and efficacy so once you identify the cma like particle size of api then you need to study the ranges of psd in which you are getting the dissolution 
as required then you will fix the ranges and you will derive to a design space and design space will be a such a range for the input variables like practical size distribution which will ensure the product quality for example you have a d90 for particle size let's say uh, 80 micron you have studied the particle size range of 60 micron and 100 micron and you done optimization you understood a scientific scientific uh, reasons for the effect of PSD on dissolution by the range of 60 to 100 micron then you can fix that range and if you operate within that range it will not impact dissolution so that will become your design space for the input variables this is just for your easy understanding design space is derived through DOE it will be a more scientific uh, uh, design space uh, for the experiments through the DOE trials just for your easy understanding I have mentioned example of PSD then critical process parameter for example granulation time for tablet formulation you have studied the range from 2 minutes to 6 minutes that will be your design space that will be your range for the granulation time and if you work within this design space or range you will not have impact on to the granule properties tableting properties compression and the tablet sequence so let's move to the other element that is control strategy once you understand the CMA and CPP then you need to control those CMAs and CPPs to have control onto your CQS. So control strategy a set of controls from raw materials to the final product to ensure quality. Raw material control means control of the PhD, control of the grade, then controlling the CPPs and all these will give you the control strategy. So in process controls will be there, real time release testing will be there, in process uh, or in process control will be there, process analytical technology, PAT, specifications and acceptance criteria. So control strategy works through these tools or you can say work through these important parameters. In process controls like blend uniformity control, blend assay control. Then you can control through the real time release testing. Also you can control through PAT and through specifications and the acceptance criteria. Now coming to the life cycle management. So life cycle management is continuous monitoring and improvement of the product and process. If you have completed the development, you have completed the uh, product transfer, and now it is commercial but still the continuous monitoring of the process is required continuous improvement is required so life cycle management works through or it incorporates post approval changes ongoing validation and process verification and knowledge management for future optimization coming to the benefits of ICH Q8 QBD approach for pharmaceutical development. See, the Q8 guideline provides you the understanding for the QBD principles and the risk based approach or quality by design approach for the pharmaceutical product development. This guideline has many benefits as it will provide you enhanced product knowledge and process understanding and that's why there will be a reduction in batch failures and deviations there will be a design space generated and regulatory flexibility will be there with this design space if you work within the design space you are not uh, actually changing the process 
and that's why regulatory burden will not be there. It is considered that working within a design, established design space is not considered as a major change. Efficient scale up and technology transfer will be there and it will improve the risk management and robust control. In conclusion, ICHQ8 guideline provides you a proactive approach for pharmaceutical product development and the principle of QBD ensures consistent consistency, safety and efficacy. QBD principles lowers the risk and give you more understanding about the product behavior and process behavior. QBD principles will give you the clear understanding about the QTPP, CQAs, CMAs, CPPs and the control strategy. Implementation leads to regulatory compliance and operational efficiency. This guideline help you to have continuous improvement and it fosters the innovation and competitiveness in the market. So in overall you can say that if you have good understanding about the ICHQ8, you will have understanding your understanding of your product, understanding of the risk and thereby you can produce the product with quality and with less failures. So to avoid failures and to have better control onto the product manufacturing, you need to understand the principles of ICHQ8 guideline. Thank you for watching the video and if you have any questions, you can mail me or you can comment me. I will always try to answer your questions. Thank you.